Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. In today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling an accordion block customization. Now, we've already worked with accordion blocks before here on the channel, but last time what we did was pretty much substitute the native icons inside the accordion block for our own custom branded icons so that it could match the rest of the design of the site. Now, this time around, we're going to be doing something similar, but not quite. We're still going to be using custom icons, but this time we're going to have them change depending on whether the dropdown is open or closed. So this is a really quick, really fun customization that you can apply to pretty much any project that you want that is going to wow your clients and it's going to be very easy for you to set up. Now, before we jump into the good stuff, I wanted to let you know that I have a new freebie available on my website. It's called Squarespace Coding Essentials, and it's a free guide that is pretty much a little roadmap that is going to show you all of the different concepts and topics that you really need to have in mind when you're coding in Squarespace. So whether you're just starting out with coding right now, or if you've been going at it for a couple of months or even years, this guide is going to help you grow your skills and move on to that next level of customization that you're aiming for. So if that's something that you want to do, make sure to grab your copy of the guide once you're done with this video. And now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into today's tutorial. Alrighty, so I'm going to be working here with a 7.1 site and I'm going to be using the classic editor. But keep in mind that this customization also applies for the Fluid Engine in 7.1 and also for 7.0. So here I have my accordion block and you can see how I'm using the arrow icon here. If you're going to be working with the plus sign, you can absolutely do that. But keep in mind that you're going to have to make a couple of modifications to the CSS itself to make sure that the classes matches the ones that the plus sign uses. So if you want to avoid having to make any modifications to the selector, then go ahead and use the arrow icons on your end as well. Okay, so let's just take a minute to break down our customization before jumping into the inspect element tool. The first thing that I want to do here is change this original icon that I have here, the chevron arrow for my own custom icon. So the way that I'm going to do this is by using the background image property. So what I think would be best here is to find a container to be able to add that background image to that is separate from the one that is carrying the icon. That way, once I hide the original icon, I'm going to still be able to see that background image without any issues. So let's go ahead and take a look at the structure that we have here to see what we can work with. All right, so I seem to have landed directly on the actual arrow icon, which is great, but I'm not going to stay just here. Like I want to take a look at a different parent containers to see what else I could work with. So here I have an arrow container. So this one seems to be holding the arrow here. And then if I go a little bit higher up, we can see that there's another container holding these two. And then if I go a little bit higher up, I already know that I'm outside sort of the area that I want to customize because this one is actually just holding the actual text for this question that I have here. And this has nothing to do with what we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and take a look again at the three containers that we have here. So my idea here would be to hide this whole element that we have here, which is the actual arrow. And that means that I can choose either this container or this container to be able to add the background image, because if I hide this, then I'm going to be able to see the background image that I have added to either of these containers. Personally, I think I'm going to be working with this arrow container that we have here. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this customization fairly generic because I want it to apply to any accordion block that I have on the site. If your customization needs to be more specific than that, if you need to apply it to a specific section, to a specific page, to a specific block, then make sure to include the corresponding ID or classes or whatever it is inside your selector. But I'm going to be keeping mine fairly generic. So let's just go ahead and use our class of arrow container. This is going to be my target container. So I'm going to add that in here in my custom CSS window. And then because I want to make sure that I'm only targeting these arrow containers within accordion blocks, because I don't really know if that class belongs to anything else. I want to make sure that I'm telling the browser that I am targeting this particular container or this particular element within accordion blocks. So I'm going to go back into the structure and I'm going to look for something that tells me that I'm working with an accordion block. So if I go a little bit higher up, we go back to this container that has a class of accordion icon container. So I could definitely use this one because at least it includes the keyword accordion. So I can assume that this class doesn't belong to any other type of block except accordion blocks. 
I'm not entirely sure, but it's a way to sort of narrow down the possibilities. But let's just go ahead and keep going up to see if there's a better class up here. So here we have a couple of classes that have accordion in it, accordion, accordion, accordion. And then here inside the sort of main wrapper of the whole block, so this is the one that's holding everything within the accordion block, we actually have a class that's called accordion block, which seems pretty appropriate. So I'm going to go ahead and use that instead in my code. So I'm going to add that in here, accordion block and I am all set. So now I'm targeting the arrow container container that is inside the accordion blocks across my entire site. So now that I have this in place, I'm going to go ahead and bring in that background image. So let's just set a URL in here. And I already have a couple of icons loaded in here. I'm going to be using this little green leaf. So I'm going to add that in there and you can see how that now is showing behind the original icon. Now, of course, at this point, it doesn't quite look good. So let's go ahead and make a couple of modifications here. First, I'm going to make sure that this is in the center. So I'm going to set background position center. And then I want to make sure that I only have one icon there. So one of these leaf images. So I'm going to go ahead and do background repeat, no repeat. And then to make sure that everything is resized accordingly, I'm going to go ahead and use here background size. And I'm going to set this to contain because what I want to happen here is I want the image to adapt to the size of the container that is holding it. So I don't want it to go over that. I don't want the image to be cropped. I just want it to be like fitting within that container. So as you can see, now we have our little icon in there and it's just a matter of getting rid of the original one because it's just getting in the way. So let's go back into our inspect element tool. And then here you can see that we have the arrow, like the actual Chevron arrow that we're seeing on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and target it through this class of arrow. But once again, I want to make sure that I'm only targeting that element within accordion blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse this selector. And then we're going to add my target container selector, which is the arrow, the one that I want to hide. And then I'm simply going to set this to display none. And once I do that, you can now see that I have my custom icon in there and the original one is gone. So now if I open up any of these drop downs, you can see how we have the little arrow there. And because of the container that we chose to apply the background image to, you can see that we actually kept that little nice sort of motion that we have in there, that little animation that we have there when we open the drop down. So that's really cool. Alrighty, so now that we have this initial part of the customization, let's move on to the second part, which is changing the icon when this drop down is open. So in order to make this happen, what we need to look for is something that is inside the HTML that can help us tell our browser that there's sort of this condition in there. When the drop down is open, we want that background image to be something else. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see what we can find. So I'm actually going to leave this one open here and we're going to take a look. We're going to look at the whole sort of element that we have in here. So if I close all of these things up, you can see, let me just start from the top here. So this is sort of like the main wrapper for the accordion block. So the whole, like the big container that is holding all the pieces of the accordion block. And then if we take a look at everything that we have inside it, we land in this other container that's an UL container. And then this one is the one that is holding sort of like the different um, questions or drop downs that we have in here. So let's start by inspecting these sort of separate drop down elements or drop down items to see if there's something there that can tell us when the drop down is open. So if we take a look here, you're going to see that all of these three elements have the same class. They have accordion item, accordion item and accordion item. However, you're going to notice that the first one actually has a data attribute in here that says a data is open true. And you can see how that one is not present in the other ones. So let's do a quick look here. I'm going to shrink this down so that we can see things better. Let me just open this up. And I want you to notice what happens when I close the drop down. what happens over here. So if I close that, you're going to see how things turn a little bit into purple. And then if I open that up, things seem to be changing again. So whenever you see purple inside the inspect element tool, that means that there's a change that is happening within the HTML of that element. 
it doesn't necessarily need to be within the element itself. It could be within something inside that element. But in this situation, you can see that again, if I click on any of these elements, the same thing happens for all of them. You can see how some like stuff gets highlighted in purple there, and then there's stuff that shows up and stuff that gets hidden. So in this case, what is happening is that this sort of data attribute in here is changing or it's disappearing if the element is closed. But once it's open, it's showing up in there. So that's something that we could use to our advantage to be able to tell the browser that when that thing is there, then I want that icon to be different because it means that the dropdown is open. So let's go ahead and try that out. What I want to do here is basically target my accordion item when that data attribute or that data attribute is present. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and we're going to use both things inside our selector. So let me show you what that would look like. Let's bring that together. All right, so we have accordion item, right? So that's the class of the, the class that is shared by all of the elements that we have in here. So we have accordion item but I don't want to target all of them. I want to target the one that has that data attribute or that data attribute in there. So I'm going to go ahead and include that in here inside square brackets. And so now keep in mind that these two things need to be together because they belong to the same element. So now I'm going to be targeting the accordion item when that data attribute is present there, which means that the dropdown is open. So when this happens, what do I want to happen here? I want to target this little element that we have in here. So the one that we targeted before and change that background image to something else. So I'm going to go ahead and use here arrow container. I don't want to use accordion block in here because it's not really no longer necessary. So here we're already um, sort of telling the browser that we're talking about an accordion block because we're dealing with accordion items. It's very unlikely that there's an accordion item in a different block. So we don't need this class in here anymore. We can just use this other selector here. And so I'm going to be targeting that arrow container within accordion items that have that data attribute of data is open true. So once that happens, I'm going to go ahead and change my background image to something else. And in this situation, all I want to do is use this different or like this alternative um, leaf file that I have in here that changes the color to black. So I'm going to go ahead and use that there. And you can see that by doing that now, when the uh, drop down is open, we have a black leaf. And when we close it, it's a green leaf. So you can see how by using all of the different bits of information that we have inside the HTML, we can actually achieve things that may feel a little bit more complex than they actually are. And there you have it. That's how you can use two different icons for your accordion blocks in Squarespace, depending on whether the accordion item is open or closed. I really hope that you found today's tutorial helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more, and don't forget to get your copy of the free guide over at my website. I will see you next time.